In this video, we're going to explore the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. First, normal distribution is continuous probability distribution. Before we've talked about discrete, now we're moving to continuous. A couple properties that are important. First, the mean, median, mode are all equal. And this happens because we're dealing with a bell-shaped and symmetric curve. That also relies on us knowing that the area under the curve is equal to one. That helps with probability. And then it's important to recognize that this curve will never touch the x-axis and its tails will go on infinitely. Now if I want to compare the mean and the standard deviation, when I look at the mean of two different graphs, I can look at the axis of symmetry, where is the center of my graph, and the one to the right, further right, is going to have a greater mean. In this case, that would be curve B. Now when I talk about standard deviation, I'm looking at the width. So if I, I see one with a narrower width, that means my data is closer together, that means less standard deviation. So that in this case, that would be curve A. Now we've talked about standard normal distribution in a certain extent before because we've done z-scores. Z-scores help us normalize our data so that our mean will be zero and our standard deviation will be one. And then we can tell how many standard deviations our value is from the mean. Now we're going to start looking at probabilities of those z-scores now as well. So first thing we do is we're going to convert our values to z-scores and then we're going to graph them. So we draw our normal curve, we put 0 in the center, and then we're going to label our z-score that we found appropriately on the graph and shade depending on where we have. If it's a less than problem we shade to the left. If it's a greater than problem, we shade to the right. And if it's between two values, we shade in between. Now if we need to find the probability, we're going to do the z-score. We're going to create that curve, that graph, so that we know which way we're actually looking. And then we use the formula norm.dist. In this case then, inside will be the a values, that z-score we just found. Our mean and standard deviation are always 0 and 1 if we convert everything to the standard normal. And then we always use true at the end. For less than, it's just that formula. For greater than, it's 1 minus that formula. And if it's in between, it's the formula for the larger value minus the formula for the smaller value. So let's look at the examples. Say I've got 6 hours of sleep, and the average person gets 7, and the standard deviation is 7.5 or 0.75. Start with my z-score and I get about negative 1.33. I can graph that now. Start with 0 in the center, negative 1.33 be to the left, and I will be shading to the left because that's the problem they want me to do. If I shade to the left, my probability of z is less than negative 1.33, so I just use the formula from Excel. I plug everything in, and I'll get about 9% or 0.09. So I know about 9% of the data or of the area is to the left of z equals negative 1.33. Now say instead I want to look to the right. Now I found already that my z-score is negative 1.33 so I can still graph that. This time I shade to the right. Once I know I'm shading to the right that tells me I have to do the 1 minus the normal distribution formula. So it's the complement of what I just found. So I do the formula, subtract it from 1, and I get about 91%. And that seems pretty accurate because the two values should add to 1 because the whole area underneath the curve is 1. Now if I had a between problem where I'm saying I slept for 7.5 hours and I'll find the area between the two z-scores, the 6 hours and then the 7 and a half hours. So I know my 6, that was a negative 1.33. If I did 7 and a half, I get about oh, three, two, -thirds of, uh, two thirds for my z-score. So I'd need to find, plot each of those. So 2 thirds would be above and one, negative 1 and a third would be below. And I'm looking at the area in between. So I find my upper value and I subtract my lower value. Plug them into Excel, I do subtraction and I get about 66%. So 
So about 66% of the data will fall between negative 1.33 and 0.67.